Hello, my historians. Did my video start? I think it did. Today we're going to learn about um, a little bit more about our history of our um, area here in Colorado. So today I'm going to talk to you about um, a group of gentlemen, and yes, girls, they were mostly men, who came through this area in search of a very specific animal. Um, so these men were mountain men. They were hunters, they were trappers, they were traders. We're gonna talk about those words in a few minutes. Um, and these men were coming into the Rocky Mountain area um, in search of a very specific animal. So this animal likes to live near water. Um, this animal has a pelt that is highly sought after. That means that during this time, um, many, many people were looking for the pelt or the fur of this particular animal. Um, so I know that you're thinking in your inquiry brain about, hmm, what kind of an animal is Ms. Donovan talking about? So I'm gonna give you a few more clues so you can keep thinking about it. Um, this particular animal loved living uh, right here where we live, and that's because this animal loves riparian zones or zones where there is water. So this is an animal that likes to live near the water. Now they don't solely live in the water, um, but they do live in zones near the water. Um, so you may have guessed it is the beaver. So these gentlemen were after uh, beaver pelts. So these were beaver trappers and traders. That means we would have a group of men that would just trap the beater, beavers. And sometimes those trappers would also be traders. So that means that they would go into um, forts or areas that look like this, um, where they would go in and they would trade. They would trade with other mountain men. They would trade with Native Americans. Um, they would trade with the settlers that had come in. So they would bring these pelts. Um, they, of course, would trap the beaver, which does kill them. They would skin them. And then they would take these pelts into these um, trading forts to trade for other supplies that they might need. Ammunition, food, um, guns, um, supplies for their horses. As you can see in all of these images here, you can see that horses were definitely a big part of, of their, um, their production here, what they needed in order to do this. So you, after our learning video today, you are going to watch the Fort Collins before video about uh, fur trapping and trading, um, and I'm going to share a little bit of knowledge with you first. So these gentlemen were, um, they were loners. They were men who came out into the Rocky Mountains in search of, of course, money, in search of work, um, and in search of a way of life that led them to living in the mountains um, mostly by themselves. I know in these pictures, there's groups. Um, this is actually a modern day picture. Um, we still have trapping and traders today. We still have men and women who hunt animals and use those pelts for um, different things. So I included this present day picture for that reason that people do still um, do this. Um, this is from our inquiry picture. So you may recognize that, be that because that was the one that we put in our first slide. Um, when we started this planner, just to help you think about this way of life. Um, so there was a particular trapper who came through this area. Um, and I'm going to focus on him because he is very important to Laporte. So I'm going to show you a picture of him in just a moment. Um, but thinking about this kind of this rush of people. So at this same time, there were also people coming to the West for gold. Um, so this area of Colorado was actually an interesting place because people were traveling through this area to get to California for the gold rush. So people going to pan and to dig for gold in California. <coughs> Excuse me. There's also gold in Colorado at this time, um, but not as much. So people were coming through here. They were panning for gold. They were looking for gold, but they were also moving through on their way to California. So at this point in our history, we have settlers coming through. We have white European settlers coming through. We have, of course, the Arapaho and the Ute and the native peoples who are already living here. And then we also have this group of mountain men or fur trappers that are also in this area. So you can kind of think of these as three groups of people that are coming into this area and living together. Um, one of the interesting thing about mountain men is that a lot of times they married Native American women. So not always, but sometimes they did. And the gentleman I'm going to introduce you in a moment, he was one of those um, who actually did marry a Native American woman. Um, so at this time, that was a very interesting thing to do. Native American people um, 
were kind of an unknown at this situation or at this point in time. So the European settlers were very intrigued by the Native Americans. Um, and these mountain men would come in and they would live up in the mountains. They would hunt, they would trap, they would come down to trade, and they would sometimes meet Native Americans, of course, and make friends with them. So I always think that's really interesting. Um, these men also, like Chief Friday, really wanted people to live in harmony. So they really felt like they could live in harmony with the natives as well as with the land. So really their idea was to live together with the Native Americans and with these um, mostly white or European men who were coming in. They really felt like, hey, why can't we live on this land together and um, share this land together? And um, that was kind of their ideas to create a society around this, which I think is very interesting. Um, so one really, really cool story that comes out of this is, um, and some of you may already know this story. This is actually one of my most favorite stories to tell. Um, and don't worry, I am not forgetting about the guy I'm going to introduce you to. I'll show you him in just a minute. Um, but where we get the name for our beautiful river, which is the Kashlapooter River. Um, so most of us have heard that word many, many times. It's the name of our school. We say it all the time. Um, a lot of us visit the river all the time to go have fun and swim and fish and boat and do all of our fun recreation activities. Um, but the story of where the name of that river came from is very interesting. So um, in the 1800s, I might have to check my notes here to see my exact date. Ooh, 1836. I always have to check my date on that. Um, we had a group of fur trappers that came through this area. So they came through the Cachalapooter Valley. They were coming here to hunt, of course, and to trap beaver. Um, and they got trapped a bit themselves. Um, so a kind of freak snowstorm came through. Uh, like we know that we can have sometimes lots of snow come with no uh, with no warning. And they had lots of supplies with them that they had to hide. So the idea was instead of carrying all of their um, gunpowder with them, they chose to hide or cache their gunpowder near the river. So when you cache something, um, you are you are hiding it. So you are stowing it away for later. Um, and so these men decided, hey, right next to these riverbanks, we can hide our gunpowder and then we can come back for it later after the snow is over and we can come back and hunt. Um, so if you look at the words cache, la poudre, those are French words um, and you can see them up here. Cache is hide, la is the, and poudre is powder. So the name of our river actually means hide the powder. So if you look down here, um, just the same story I just told you is typed right here. French fur trappers discovered the rich bounty of northern Colorado. In the winter of 1836, a group of trappers buried gunpowder next to a river for safekeeping until the following spring. The name Cash Laputa River comes from the French words hide and powder. Today, that beautiful river, river flows out of the mountains and runs through the middle of Fort Collins. Um, so the, I always think that's a fun little tidbit of information that you can share with people because um, I think it's pretty amazing. So these men, of course, were coming through here looking for beaver. Um, I shared with you earlier the idea that beaver really love to live near the water. Um, and you're going to learn a little bit more about the animal during our Fort Collins before video. Okay, so we're going to open. Little timeline we can peek out because I did mention a few of these things a minute ago. Um, so Chief Friday, um, 1831, Chief Friday was born. I believe, yes. 1836 is when they uh, cash hit the powder, cash the powder, right? Just to give you some dates. Um, we, during this time, of course, have settlers moving west. We have people going to California for gold. The, all of these things were happening at the same time. Um, and then, of course, during this time, we also have settlers coming into this area wanting to live in this area. Um, so just to give you a little idea of the timeline. Okay, so a trapper is someone who traps animals. They set traps. They set snares. A trader is someone who's going to trade the pelts for goods or for money. Like I told you earlier, some of these men were both trappers and traders. Some of them just did the trading, meaning they might um, get the pelts from a trapper, pay them, and then go in and trade for other items. So there was lots of different ways to go about um, trapping and trading um, for money or for goods. So here's the gentleman that I mentioned before. His name 
you'll notice, is also French, and it's Antoine Genie. Um, so Antoine Genie is important to us because he was the first recorded permanent white settler in northern Colorado. That means prior to him coming here in 18, but it was about the 1850s, early 1850s, late 1840s, um, prior to him being here, nobody was permanent, meaning trappers would move through, they would hunt, they would leave, um, traders would come through, they would trade, they would leave. Nobody was permanent. Um, but Antoine was a gentleman who became permanent, meaning he had a house, he lived here, um, and if you've already read my slide here, you can see that he is the most important to us because he founded the town of Laporte in 1858. So when you found something, does it mean like, oh, hey, look, there's a town, I found it? Um, it actually means that he began the town or he was a founding father, as we say, right? A beginning person of the town of Laporte. And that happened in 1858. And I'm gonna show you a few more pictures in just a moment. So he was a French American fur trader um, and an early homesteader in Larimer County. And Larimer County, of course, is the county that we all live in now. Um, and he founded the town of Laporte in 1858, like I told you before. Um, so Antoine actually came through here. Sorry, guys, my pictures were not loading up here, but I'm going to tell you this story anyway. Um, he came through here as a young man with his father, and he actually saw this as the loveliest spot on earth. So when Antoine came through here with his father, he saw this area as, wow, this is a place that I would really like to come back and live. Um, and he actually did that. So he came back later and was able to homestead. Um, he built a cabin, which I will show you in a minute. Um, he opened the first saloon and I believe the first grocery store. So Laporte was not always called Laporte. Um, Prior to it being called Laporte, it was called the town of Kelowna, which I find interesting, um, but it later became Laporte. Um, Laporte is also a French word. We have a lot of French influence in our area because of these early French fur trappers that came through. Um, and Laporte is actually French for the door. So that's another thing that you can share with your friends. What Antoine felt um, was that Laporte was the doorway into the Rocky Mountains. So if you think about our river and how we sit in the foothills of the mountains, really Laporte is a doorway into the beautiful Rocky Mountains. Um, so that's why he named Laporte what he did because he felt that it was um, a doorway into the Rocky Mountains. So here's a few more pictures of Antoine. Um, sadly, if we were all still together, we would be going on a field trip in about a week to go see his cabin. Um, but this cabin is right here in our beautiful town of Fort Collins, so you can go on your own with your families, hopefully this summer. Um, Antoine Janice's cabin is at the Library Park um, park that's right next to the Old Town Library. So this is where we would have visited as a class. Kind of a bummer we don't get to. Um, but this is Antoine's cabin. He lived here with his wife and many, 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 many children. In fact, he had so many children, I honestly don't remember the number. Seven and 11 come to my mind. So it might be somewhere in between there. Um, he actually married a Native American woman and had many children with her and lived in this very tiny cabin with all of those kids, which I always find amazing. Um, here he is here, and here he is here with a group of Sioux natives, um, and you can see him right here. So again, he did a lot of work, just like Chief Friday did, to try to help people live in harmony and in peace with each other, um, because during this time, there were also settlers coming through that were causing some conflict with the native people. And Antoine was another person in this area who really worked towards peace and really wanted to help people live in harmony together. Um, this may look familiar to you. I'm gonna actually enlarge this a little bit for you guys. Um, this is the memorial plaque or a plaque to kind of honor Antoine. And it's right across the street from Vern's. So so maybe you and your families can take a little walk sometime today or tomorrow and you can go over and you can see this um, plaque that is, um, it's actually, I believe, on McConnell Drive. I would have to look it up for sure. Um, but you guys can go and investigate this and it's right, it's near Vern's. Um, so this is just a plaque to honor him, to honor the person who started our beautiful little town of Laporte where we get to live and go to school. Um, and if it wasn't for him, 
we may not be here. So that's one reason why we study him um, because we live here and this is a person who um, who lived in our area. So Antoine, like I said, lived in this cabin with his family. He was a fur trader, so that's how he made his money. Um, he definitely worked towards, towards peace between the people. Um, so again, I already shared this with you. A um, couple interesting facts about Laporte and Bellevue. Uh, Laporte is French for the door. Um, we already kind of talked about why the name is Laporte because it's the doorway to the Rocky Mountains. Um, one really cool thing about Bellevue, so Bellevue is a little tiny town that's just up Risk Canyon. Um, it's barely a town, but there are people that live there and some of you, you live there. And the cool thing about uh, Bellevue is that there is a bison kill site that's along the river, um, which takes us back 10,000 years that we know that there were people living in that area. There are also archeological remains of teepee rings. So that is something else that you can go up and find in Bellevue. Um, of course, a lot of them are on personal property, which I think it'd be really cool to own a piece of property that has an old teepee ring on it. Um, but what it is, is just evidence of the natives living up in that area and setting up their camps. Um, and this tells us uh, as historians about what was happening during this time um, of our history when we weren't living here, of course, but of course, our ancestral settlers, if any of you are related to them, how cool would that be when they were moving here and living here? Um, and of course, along with the natives who already lived here. Okay. Oh, that's a little preview for our next video. Okay, so um, next thing I want you guys to do is just hop onto the Old Town uh, Fort Collins videos, and I want you to watch the video about the fur trappers and traders and learn a little bit more about our area and especially the beaver as an animal. Thanks for listening, guys.